Hi, it's Aurelius. In this video, I'm going to share with you 21 Notion tips and tricks that will make you more productive, make your workflow easier, and overall help you make the most out of Notion. Feel free to look in the description box below where I provided timestamps and a list of all these tips to help you navigate through this video. These tips are in no particular order. And with that said, let's get started. How to create a board or Kanban board like Trello. If you're familiar with Trello, then you know how it works and how it looks like. Here's a very basic board I've prepared in Notion. You've got three different columns, not started, in progress and completed. And you can create different columns if you wish to do so. Add a new group and you can say something like published. How it works is depending on where that task is currently sitting at in the phase, you can drag and drop it. So from not started to in progress to completed, then to published, whatever those categories may be for you. To create a board like this, I'm just going to create a new page and you can very well just start with the board from the database section right here. Once you've clicked that, you can start customizing your board. An alternate way is to go to templates and under the marketing dropdown, for example, you can click on the content calendar click on use this template. And now you've got a basic content calendar that you can start with. The next tip is synced blocks. Let me explain what a synced block is and this feature that you can use. Let's say you've got a block of text right here and you've got another workspace, but you wanna make sure that they are in sync in terms of the text and whatever you update in one workspace, you wanna make sure that it also updates in the other. In here, let's say I wanna put in update, and as you can see with the second workspace, it did not update. Thankfully, Notion's got a paste and sync option. I'm just going to highlight everything in this block. And now on my keyboard, I'm just going to do a command C or on the windows, it's control C. Go to your other workspace where you want that block synced. And then I'm going to just paste it using command V or it's control V on the windows. Now you'll see an option to paste and sync, select that. Now this sync block is indicated with a red border. Anything I update in the block, let's say I enter update here. Let's go to my other workspace and now it is synced. Next up, you can integrate Notion with over 3000 apps using tools such as Zapier, IFTTT and Integromat. If you're unfamiliar with what Zapier is, it'll allow you to integrate with other apps such as Google Calendar, whole range of other Google apps, of course. You've got Slack and other apps. In this example, I've created a very basic workflow in Zapier. Whenever there's a new spreadsheet row in my Google Sheets, then it'll create a new database item in Notion. So it syncs. Let's say this is my sales spreadsheet. And in Notion, I've got a workspace called sales spreadsheet. Whenever there's a new row in my spreadsheet, it'll automatically sync it with my Notion workspace. So let's add a dummy row right here. I'm going to add a customer name. So let's say this is one of our customers and let's say she purchased something for $20. So I've inserted that. Let's head back to my Notion workspace. And now you can see that new row in my sales spreadsheet Notion workspace. Moving on, the next tip is you can share your Notion template with others without affecting your existing workspace. Let's take this board as an example and you wanna share this with others. Click on the share option, click on the share to web option. And then you wanna make sure allow duplicate as template is enabled, making sure that allow editing is disabled so that won't affect your existing workspace. Now, whoever has that link that you shared it to can now duplicate this particular workspace. All they need to do is click that duplicate option. Now, speaking of sharing Notion templates, one of the ways in order to monetize your brand or business is that you can actually sell your Notion templates. Take a look at some of these examples at notioneverything.com. These people are actually selling their Notion templates. You've got a sales dashboard, an all-in-one management a Notion template. You've got a digital marketing workflow, some journaling Notion templates as well. Notion Everything actually allows you to add your template to the marketplace by following these steps as well. By following the previous tip where you share to web, all you need to do again is to go share, share to web, and that's the link you wanna to provide to customers. The next tip is customizing Notion with custom icons. As you see on the left, you can see some of my custom icons here. In order to change the icon to make it a little more fun and a bit more catchy so they don't all look like this right here, simply click and hover over that icon, click on the icon, and now you can either select one of the emojis or upload your own. Clicking on upload an image, you choose an image. One of my favorite places to get icons is at flaticon.com. Simply search what you want and there are some free ones as well as premium ones. Because I've got a premium account, I can download all the icons in a particular bundle. 
Once you've downloaded some icons, click on choose an image and select the particular icon you want. So let's say I want this one right here. Now it's uploading. And now you've got your custom icon for that specific workspace. The next tip is selecting properties quicker. I'm in my YouTube content calendar workspace. Let's say I want to add a publication date to this particular card. You click the ellipsis and then from here, you click on the edit property. Then you go to publication date. Then you actually add that date. In order to get to these properties a lot quicker, all I need to do is start typing maybe publication or PU. And then as you can see, it's found it right away, saving me time. So again, I click that and let's say I wanna change the category, just start typing CA and then there's my category. And now I can choose my category right away. The next tip is embedding a Google Calendar to your workspace. Let's say you wanna add your Google Calendar to this particular workspace. The next thing you're going to wanna do is head to Google Calendar. I wanna embed this particular calendar to my Notion workspace. Click on the options, then to settings and sharing. Scroll down until you see integrate calendar. You wanna copy the public URL. Let's copy it. And now head back to your Notion workspace. Start typing a slash. And then from here, we're going to type embed, select embed, and then paste in that Google Calendar public URL. Click on embed link. And now you've got your calendar. What you can also do is just resize it to the size you want. And that's really all there is to it. The next tip is linking another page using the at symbol. In your workspace, let's say you've got some paragraph and you wanna mention to your team or anyone else reading this workspace uh, so that they know what you're referring to. And let's say we want to link to our YouTube content calendar. All you need to do is enter the at sign and we are going to now type in that particular workspace. In this case, it's a YouTube content calendar. There it is, I'll click it. And now this is clickable and it'll go straight to that workspace. Next tip is saving bookmarks and creating your own reading list. You can very well save your bookmarks on your browser or using other apps, but with Notion, you can actually save it by using Notion's Web Clipper, which is compatible with Chrome, Safari, and Firefox. It's an extension that you add. For example, if you come across a particular article or blog post and you wanna save that as a favorite or to your reading list, simply head to your Notion Web Clipper. That'll automatically detect the title of that blog post and then add it to, make sure that you select the right workspace. I've selected reading and favorites. And now when I hit save page, it's added it to that particular workspace. Going inside the reading and favorites workspace, you'll see the article added here. And now I can choose a category. This is an article and I can choose a topic, whether I've read it or not. This is of course a custom reading and favorites table that I created. If you wanna learn how to create something like this, I'll link up a few resources in the description below. So by using Notion's Web Clipper, you can have a reading list or a bunch of bookmarks in one location. This next tip may be a little random, but did you know you can actually earn credits in Notion? All you need to do is head to settings and members, go to earn credit. And as you'll see, you can earn $5 credit if you log in on the web and a desktop app, another $5. Log in through a mobile app, $5, and you can apply your credits to a Notion paid plan. Next up, Notion has a Notion app for iOS and Android devices, but what I love about it is that you can add widgets to, let's say your iPhone, and here I am on my iPhone, and you can see my recents, so you can add that particular widget so that you can get to those recent documents or workspaces more like it uh, straight away at a glance. Simply click the plus button on the top left corner, I'm searching for Notion. And now you can have quick access to a particular page, some of your favorites, a larger version, your recents, and a larger version of your recents too. The next tip is creating a new page on your actual browser. Let's say you're browsing on your web browser and you don't have Notion handy, all you need to do, head to the address bar, type in notion.new. When you do that, it'll create a new page for you. Now let's talk about some useful Notion shortcuts that you can use to speed things up, but I'm gonna put all this under one tip. All right, the first shortcut is if you wanna create a bullet list, all you need to do is either start typing a, with a dash or either a plus, so you can see that a plus also works, or you can use the asterisk. And now I can list down all my items. That's shortcut number one. Shortcut number two is to create a to-do list, all you need to do is use the square brackets. So an open square bracket as well as a closing square bracket. Now you've got a box and you can start adding your to-dos. I mentioned this one before, but using the at sign, you can also mention other people in your team or you can 
link to another page, or you can set a date. That's the ad symbol. The next shortcut is headings. To insert a heading one style, all you need to do is use that hashtag key on your keyboard, then press space. And now it's formatted as a heading one. So I'll type in heading one so you can distinguish. For heading two, simply type in the hashtag twice, press the space bar, and now you've got heading two. For heading three, again, just use the hashtag and this time we're going to use three hashtags, spacebar, and we've got heading three. The next shortcut is indenting and nesting content. So for example, you've got this list and under grapes, which is the parent, you've got green grapes and purple grapes. What you can do is simply indent it using the tab key. So select that line you want indented, press the tab key, and now it's indented and nested. Same with the purple. And another quick tip here, sometimes you want to then go back to the parent, but when you type in enter, it stays on that nest. So in order to go back, simply hit the shift and tab key, and now it's taking me back a step. Notion's got a ton of shortcuts that you can use, including keyboard shortcuts, and I'll list the page in the description box below, but this is their page where you can learn the shortcuts. And as you can see, there's just so many that there's too much to talk about in one video. The next tip is using Notion's built-in reminder system. Let's say you've got this to-do list and you wanna set a reminder or set some sort of due date so that Notion will actually alert you and notify you of that due date. I wanna set a reminder for task one. All you need to do is use the slash key, then type in reminder, select date and reminder. And for this one, I'll select today. What you can also do is include a time by enabling the time, set a time, if you wanna be reminded and notified, make sure you select the reminder right here, either at time of event or one of these other options. The next tip is coloring your content. You can change a color using a shortcut, simply use the slash key and then type in the color you want. So I'm gonna select yellow here and now I can either choose yellow text color or yellow background. Let's select yellow background. You can add that command either at the front or the end of the block. I'm going to add it to the end. So slash, then yellow. And this time I will use yellow text color. Let's repeat it for this one, but instead let's choose blue, blue background. And there you have it. Now, of course you can highlight the specific text of content and then you'll get this format bar. Then you can select the actual color. So choose based on which you prefer. Next tip is embedding YouTube videos. The first step is to go to that YouTube video and then copy that link either from your browser or simply go to share. And now you've got the link, click on copy. Go to the workspace where you wanna embed your YouTube video. From here, simply use a slash key, then start typing embed, click on embed, paste in that link, click on embed link. And now it's embedded the YouTube video. I can also adjust the size depending how small or large I like it. The next tip is another embedding tip, but this time you can actually embed a Google Drive doc. Simply go to your workspace, type in slash, and this time we're going to type in Google and select in Google Drive. You need to make sure you connect your account. Once you've connected it, select your account. It'll open up this browser window. And now I'm going to select this specific spreadsheet right here. And as you can see, it's embedded my Notion test sales spreadsheet. The next tip is exporting Notion worksheets and pages. Let's say I wanna export my sales spreadsheet. All I need to do is hit the ellipsis option right here. Find the export option. Now I can export it either in a PDF format, HTML or Markdown and CSV. Select what you wanna include, everything or no files or images. Page format, selecting either A4, A3 or one of these other options. Set the scale and once you're done, click on export. Now I've opened up the PDF document. This comes especially handy if you wanna share your work with others who don't have Notion. The next tip is viewing your page history. Have you ever accidentally deleted some content and you wish you could turn back time? Well, there is an option to go back to your page history. Simply hit the ellipsis option, go to page history. And now I can see the history of this entire workspace. Let's say I wanna restore one from 11.06 a.m., which has no data. I can now click on restore version, click on restore. And now you can see it's restored that version. I can also go back, let's go to page history again. Let's say I wanna revert those changes, select it, then click on restore version. Now I've got it back. The last and final tip is a resource for even more tips and tricks, which is none other than Notion's YouTube channel. They've got tutorials covering the most basic features as well as more advanced features for those who wanna level up their Notion skills. 
So there you have the 21 Notion tips and tricks. Hope this video was helpful and I'd love to know which of these tips was your favorite. And if you do have any of your own tips that you'd like to add to this list, feel free to comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. And if you learned a new thing or two, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and turn on notifications too if you're new. And be sure to stick around to watch these next relevant videos.